Hey everyone, welcome back to the first video of this series and let's talk about NPM in this video. So what is NPM? So generally NPM is known as a uh, node package manager. Node package manager. So if you are a JavaScript developer, you might have already heard about node. Node is a JavaScript runtime basically. So node allows you to write JavaScript code, which can run anywhere where node is present or it can run on the browser. So node allows to run the JavaScript, right? So this node have extended us to write JavaScript on the backend as well. When node came in, it allowed us to write JavaScript in the backend as well, right? So imagine you are developing a software or application or a backend server, right? So you have a team of two, four, five or 10 people and you're building us out a software and that software might be very large or that software might be uh, very small, uh, anything that you talk about, right? You are building a software and that is written in JavaScript, right? That is written in JavaScript. Now what happens when you're building something, for example, you're building an X feature out there, right? So this is always encountered that you need certain behavior or certain utility that can be brought from a, that can be brought from a third party library, right? So we as a developer also rely on various other third party libraries that can give us some utility or some function which makes our life easier as a developer. We don't need to write everything ourselves, right? There are companies who have, we are very big, we have a lot of funding. They can do so, they can set up their own dev team to write everything. But generally in most of the cases, it doesn't happen. We take dependency on the third party or a package that is well maintained, uh, open source that is well maintained and you know upgraded and bug fixes is happening there. We take them as a dependency and use them in our own purpose, right? Now you got the scenario, you have a team, you're building a software and you're a third party dependency, right? So for example, you're building a node application or generally I look like to say it a JavaScript application, right? So what happens there? Uh, you need a third party library. So there should be a place from where you should bring that JavaScript library, right? Or JavaScript utility or JavaScript module or JavaScript package, however you like to say that, right? So that particular place is known as NPM, right? It's not only known as NPM, there are other alternatives as well, but you can think of that NPM is a registry. NPM is a place where there all the packages are listed down and you just download that package and use it in your project, right? And also you can upload your own packages there and certain other organization or open source developers can use them, right? So there are a lot of things that goes behind there are private repository, there are public repository, certain company have their own private set of repository where developer push in their packages and other developer of their particular organization consume that, right? So this also happens, right? But generally NPM is open source, right? And it allows us to have this capability of uploading and consuming packages, right? It's a node package manager, right? When node came in, right? It don't came in. So there should be consumption of packages that we have already understood. Now this NPM comes up, this NPM comes up as a company, right? And it keeps the utility to register our packages, consume other packages as well, right? Going forward, what happened? Like this became a, you know, default utility to consuming and uploading packages, right? It was very simple. It provided us the CLI we just upload our packages and with just a line of click, we can download the packages as well, right? But again, there are some, some things that you need to consider when you are consuming a package that we'll talk about in the later section of this series, right? But today let's look into the NPM website first, right? So this is NPM website right now. Currently it looks very amazing, right? So it tells us build amazing things. So the main motive is like, you know, uh, to offer 
packages in a simple and very easy manner to the developer so they can consume them right so npm was the independent company going forward it was acquired by github going forward it was acquired by github in 2020 right and github is owned by microsoft ultimately github owns npm now and it's going very smooth right now as you can see the work of the npm team over last 10 years and contributed thousands of open source developer and maintainers we have right now 1.3 million packages with 75 million billions of download a month right so this is a very very big thing to this do this thing right so ultimately this is uh, run by github now they manage the company now right and ultimately there are a lot of alternatives that came in yarn is the one we'll talk about them uh, in the next video but uh, github was the you know default registry that came in with a node and right now also it comes when you install node git this node npm uh, comes by default with node right if you install node you'll get a npm right so let's go ahead and just quickly look at how does it look like so this is the website for npm uh, npmjs.com right so you can search any library for example let's consider axios so axios is one of the most used and most helpful library for you know making api calls and uh, consuming the uh, data from the api so from is based uh, http client for browser and node.js so you it works with browser as well and node.js as well right so so as you can see this is a package right this is a package that is public and it is published as well right and one thing you can see is there is a command here npm i axios so you can just run this command in your project and it will install it will it will bring a dependency folder entire entire package to your project and you can you can use any utility that is provided by this axios right if you go down there will be a lot of things that will presence like you know they will be uh, giving this package and you can use this and uh, have this uh, you know use this on your own in your project right next thing is you can see also also the downloads that is happening weekly or calculate monthly of this library right so one way if you're consuming a library just see this download people are using them it is well maintained it is well consumed there are bug fixes security fixes everything it is safe to consume right but there are a lot 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 of people who are consuming this library right so this is npm site and there are 1.3 million packages that we just saw like this hosted on npm and developers publish their package every day their developers consume the package every day and you can see the result of that right so in a sort npm is a package manager and a registry where you can register your package or consume the package published by other registered uh, other developers and use it in your project it just make your life very simpler right but if you're consuming a package just note it down there are a few points to consider and that points could be your goals or your company goals for consuming a package and that's it for this video i hope you have got like what npm is and we are gonna dive deep install npm compare npm with yarn right and see how it differs and how it works in the coming videos in this series thank you so much if you are new here consider subscribing and if you get to learn something new on this channel just hit the subscribe button i'll see you next time till then goodbye